in law enforcement, I have a very important question for you, one which soon may be a matter of life or death. I'm sure some people become police officers just so they can boss other people around. But I'm going to assume here that you mean well, that you want to be one of the good guys. In which case, my question is this. Is there anything the politicians could enact into law that you wouldn't enforce? Is there any order that you would refuse to carry out? Or will you do absolutely anything your bosses tell you to? In the U.S., police have already obeyed orders to fine or arrest people for a wide variety of harmless activities, such as dancing at the Jefferson Memorial or having a vegetable garden in their front yard. Police have even gone so far as to execute violent paramilitary raids on food co-ops and organic farms. For decades, police have been carrying out armed home invasions, forced property confiscations, and other acts of violence against people who weren't hurting anyone, but who engaged in behaviors or habits which lawmakers have arbitrarily declared to be illegal. You may be comfortable in assuming that you'll never receive an order to do something truly immoral, but the fact is, with every order you receive, you have a choice between obeying without question or relying on your conscience. No doubt there were cops a few years ago who never expected to be ordered to disarm innocent people, to do door-to-door -door home searches without warrant or probable cause, or to detain and interrogate people for merely driving down a road. Yet police have since been ordered to do all of these things, and almost without exception they obeyed. So it's not unreasonable to ask, is there any point at which you will draw a line and say no, that I will not do? And if you won't draw such a line anywhere, if you will do absolutely anything your political masters tell you to, how are you any different from the enforcers of Soviet Russia, Red China, or Nazi Germany? You may be tempted to say, I don't make the law, I just enforce it. Or to argue that if some legislature, court, or some authority above you says it's okay, then it must be. But keep in mind that this is exactly what the thugs of every tyrannical regime in history said to justify their actions. And how do we remember those people now? As courageous, noble law enforcers? No. Unless you want posterity remembering you as a heartless, mindless pawn of oppression, then you'd better decide, and decide now, where you will draw that line. Unfortunately, there's little indication that most cops have any line at all. The incidents of police officers refusing to inflict injustice upon the people are extremely rare. Even when cops say they personally oppose certain laws, such as marijuana prohibition, nearly all of them continue to violently enforce these laws against nonviolent people. In other words, they recognize these laws as counterproductive and unjust, but they choose to enforce them anyway. For the most part, American cops seem completely incapable of disobeying immoral orders and instead do what the enforcers of every other authoritarian empire have done inflicting harm on innocent people whenever and however those in power tell them to, while accepting no personal responsibility for their ends. I hope you are better than that. Keep in mind there are a lot of decent Americans who do have the integrity and courage to draw a line in the sand, a point at which they will disobey and resist violations of their rights by those in power. It may be that they refuse to be disarmed. It may be that they refuse to cooperate with warrantless searches, or refuse to keep funding a government they view as destructive and unjust. Whether you agree with them doesn't particularly matter. What does matter is whether in the end you are willing, if and when you are ordered to do so, to violently assault the dissenters for their disobedience. When they draw their line in the sand and stand their ground, and your supervisors tell you to use whatever level of violence necessary to get submission and compliance from the resistors, will you obey? If it came down to it, would you kill American citizens for disobeying politicians? Now, if someone is actually harming someone else, of course you have the right to use whatever force necessary to stop the attacker and protect the innocent. But that would be the case even if you had no badge and no uniform. But when you try to arrest someone who hasn't threatened or harmed anyone else, but has only disobeyed some arbitrary regulation, then you are the one initiating force. You are the one starting a fight. You are the bad guy. Now remember, the American Revolution was people forcibly resisting gun confiscation, warrantless searches, what they viewed as unfair taxation, and a number of other oppressions. All in the name of law, all carried out by law enforcers. If you had lived back then, would you have been among the rebel colonists, the ones who refused to be disarmed, refused to pay taxes, and resisted warrantless detainment and searches? 
Would you have sided with the signers of the Declaration of Independence, or would you have been among the Redcoats, the law enforcers, assaulting, caging, or killing any colonists with the gall to disobey the king? And which side are you on today? Of course, the message you'll get from your superiors, the politicians, and your fellow officers is that it's not your place to decide which laws to enforce, and that as long as you faithfully follow orders, that you can't be held personally responsible for doing as you're told. But that is a lie, a horribly dangerous lie. At the Nuremberg trials, it was established that the excuse used by the Nazi law enforcers that they weren't to blame and shouldn't be punished because they were just doing as they were told did not relieve them of personal responsibility for their actions. And make no mistake, if you choose to blindly obey unjust commands and one day your intended victims decide to fight back, saying that you're just doing your job will not make you bulletproof. It may be your own life you save by deciding now at what point you will choose to be a moral, responsible human being instead of just an obedient pawn of those in power. Ultimately, only you can answer the question of where you will draw that line. But really, the only moral, rational answer is this. If something would be wrong for you to do without a badge, then you shouldn't do it with one either. The idea that uniforms and legislation can give you special rights is both false and horribly dangerous. Nearly every large-scale injustice in history was committed by people who wrongly imagined that their position of authority made it okay for them to do things that other people have no right to do. Like everyone else, you have the right to use force to stop attackers and protect the innocent. And when you do that, you are the hero. But you have no right to be the attacker, even if it's your job and even if the aggression is called law. Always, in every situation, you and you alone are responsible for what you do. Wearing a badge and a uniform and doing whatever you're told does not make you brave and noble or deserving of any respect. Just following orders is a coward's excuse. If your job requires you to assault or cage people who haven't threatened or harmed anyone, then quit. Being an actual protector, doing the right thing no matter what anyone else says, even if it means disobeying orders and breaking the law, that takes courage and integrity. That makes you a hero. So, do you have enough of a spine to draw that line? Decide now before your failure to think for yourself results in damage that cannot be undone.